Dear believers, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hayya sallallahu Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. We give praise and thanks to Allah. We thank Allah forever. All the praise is due to Allah. Nothing happens except by the will of Allah. Again, we say all praise is due to Allah. Again and again and again. All the praise is due to Allah. We thank him. We thank him for his Messenger, our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as we say, peace and blessings of God be upon him, be upon his family, be upon the companions of Muhammad, all the righteous servants. Peace be upon them. Allah said that Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is a model example for any one who accepts him. For anyone who accepts him, that he is a model example of what God wants in the human person. We thank Allah for him. Again, for his family, for his companions. Peace be on all of them and peace be on you, Muslim. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah again. <clears throat> we thank Allah for this great day, Friday, Juma day great day. We, the believers, we look forward to this day. This day is like uh, gas to a car. Huh? It's like a hungry man, like food to a hungry man. Huh? Yeah. This is a great day. This is a day, not only a day that you get food physically, but you get spiritual food. And this is what we hope to deliver to you today. Something spiritual for your soul so that your soul can leave out here much better than it was before it came. Inshallah. That's our intent. And we ask Allah to bless us to be able to do that. May Allah bless us to give us, us, myself too, included, what he wants us to have. Yeah. Not what I want you to have, but what Allah wants you to have. What he wants for his servant. Because we are the servants of Allah, right? Alhamdulillah. <coughs> All praise is Allah. Well, this subject today that Allah blessed me to, to um, study and to give to us today is the story of Ayub, who was a, whoo, a patient and a devout servant of Allah. And this story of Ayub is not a story of something we just read and and just say how beautiful it is, but it's something that we can take from it because we need everything that God gives us. We have to have it. God is in control. There's no accident or coincidence that we are here, that we're about to receive this message. God is in control. Not the president, not our wife, not our children, not our husband. But God is in control. And the more we understand that, the better our life will be. When we understand that God is in control. They had these, uh, I'm going to go right into it. A group of angels was discussing a lot of human
living creature. How those who were humble and and being humble, how they earned the pledges of Allah. And why those who were arrogant, they incurred the displeasure of Allah. But one of the angels mentioned, he said, the best creature on earth today is Ayu. This is what we're going to talk about today, Ayu. He said, Ayu, he's a man of noble character, and he displays excellent patience and always remembering God, his glorious Lord. He is an excellent model for the worshipers of Allah. An excellent model for the worshipers of Allah. Wow. Woo, buddy, buddy, buddy. Woo, I feel that. An excellent worship. An excellent model for us. Those who worship Allah. And it say, in return, his Lord has, has blessed him with a long life and, a, and plenty of riches. Yet he is never haughty or selfish. His family, his servants, as well as the needy and the poor, share in his good fortunes. He feeds and clothes the poor and buys slaves to set them free. He makes those who receive his charity feel as if they are favoring him. So kind and gentle is he. Woo, praise be to Allah. But look, you just heard that. We just, we just heard that. But look, how Allah has blessed him. But look, in hearing that, in hearing the angels making this, having this conversation among themselves, he bleats the devil. Overheard it. <laughs> he overheard the conversation and he became annoyed, dissatisfied. He didn't like it. So he planned to tempt Ayub and to corrupt him. He wanted to tempt him into corruption and disbelief. So he hastened to him and he tried to distract Ayub from his prayer by whispering to him about the good things in life. But Ayu was a true believer, and he would not let evil thoughts tempt him. This disturbed him, he believes. It disturbed him more. So he began to hate Ayu then. He began to hate him even more. So what, what did Satan do? He went to Allah. And he told Allah about Ayub. He said that although he was continually glorifying you, Allah, he was not doing so out of his sincerity. He wasn't sincere, Allah. But he was only doing it just to satisfy you so that he could keep his wealth. So his wealth won't be taken from him. And Satan told Allah, he said, it's all a show. It ain't nothing but a show, Allah. He said, all, all out of greed. This is Satan telling Allah about his servant. So Allah said, so he said, if you remove, Satan said, if you remove his wealth from him, then you will find that his tongue will no longer mention your name. He will no longer, he will stop praying to you. I just gave this coup ball over St. Eve. My brothers and sisters over here. You're unfortunate. You can't be here with us. Because we're sinful people. But you are a herd of jumping. Jumping, sitting on the floor, jumping about, you know, and, and hollering. When they was receiving this, receiving this message, they was receiving it in their hearts and their souls. So Allah told Iblis, he told Satan, he told the devil, he said, Ayu was one of his most sincere devotees. Huh. He said, he's one of my sincere ones. 
You know, Allah told him, he said, told Satan, he said, you, you can get, you, he said, he said, you can get all of them, but my sincere ones you won't get. That's a lesson for us, brother, sister. He said, he said, you is one of my sincere uh, worshipers. He did not worship me because of the favor. His worship stemmed from his heart. And he had nothing to do with material things. Said it had nothing to do with material things. But to prove to you, Satan, the depths of our you sincerity and patience, I'm allow him to, I'm allow you to do whatever you want to do. You and your helpers. Whatever you all wish to do, what I use well. I'm allowed. So he believes was very happy then. He oh, he very happy. So he gathered his imps, his helpers, the little devil. He grabbed all of them, and they went about destroying. I use cattle, destroying his servants and his farms until he was left with no possession at all. Rubbing his hands in glee, he believes appear before I you in the skies of a wise old man and said to him, said to him, give me one second, I'll make sure you phone off. And said to him, All your wealth is lost. Some people say it is because you gave too much charity. Hmm? That you was wasting your time with your continuous prayers to Allah. And he said, others say that Allah has brought this upon you in order to please your enemies. You know, we all got enemies, right? The believers going to have enemies. So he said, if Allah had the capacity to prevent harm, then he would have protected your wealth. Listen to this devil. But look at Ayu. True to his belief, Ayu replied. What Allah has taken away from me belongs to Allah. <laughs> he said, I was only his trustees for a while. He gives to whom he wills, and he withholds from who he wills. With these words, are you again prostrated to his Lord? He put his head on the floor, he bowed down, he prostrated to his Lord. So, at least the devil saw this. He felt frustrated. So he began again to address Allah. He went to Allah again. He said, Allah, he said, I have stripped by you of all of his possessions. But he still remains faithful to you. He said, however. If he is only hiding his, he is only hiding his disappointment. For he placed great store by his many children. The real test of a parent is through his children. You would then see I you reject you. Allah said, "Okay, I'm gonna grant you disappointment. <coughs> I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you do what you want, but." Let me warn, let me warn you that that won't reduce I use faith in me, nor his patience. 
it won't reduce none of it. He believes again, gathered his helpers, went and got all his helpers, and they set about their evil deeds. He shook the foundation of the house which I used children lived in, causing the building to crash and crumble, killing all his children. Then he went to I used disguise again as a man who had come with sympathy to sympathize with him in a comfort and comforting tone, he said to Ayu, the circumstances under which your children died were sad. They were sad, man. But surely, your Lord is not rewarding you properly for all your prayers. All your prayers, he is not rewarding you properly. I sympathize. Having said this, Ibelis waited anxiously just to see what Ayu reaction would be, hoping that Ayu was now ready to reject her law. But again, knowing Ayu, he disappointed him by replying. Listen to what he said. Allah sometimes gives and sometimes he takes. He is sometimes pleased and sometimes displeased with our deeds. Whether well, a thing is beneficial or harmful to me, I will remain firm in my belief and remain thankful to my Creator. Then I you prostrated to his Lord. At this, Iblis was extremely upset. Iblis again called on Allah. He said, Oh my Lord. Now listen now. Iblis said, Oh my Lord. He recognized Allah as being his Lord. Huh? Yeah. So he said, oh my Lord, I use wealth is gone. His children are dead. But he is still healthy in body. Mm. And as long as he enjoys good health, he will continue to worship you in the hope of regaining his wealth back and producing more children. I tell you what, Allah grant me authority over his body. Let me have his body so that I can weaken it. Then he would surely reject worshiping you then. Hmm. And he would then become disobedient to you. Allah wanted to teach Ibelis something. He wanted to teach Ibelis a lesson. He wanted to show Iblis that Ayu was a devout servant of his. So he granted Iblis this third request, but he placed a condition. He placed a condition. He said, I give you authority over his body, but not over his soul. Huh? Iblis does not have authority over our soul. And he said, his intellect I would not give you authority over his intellect or his heart. Or his heart. For in these places reside the knowledge of me and my way. My way, my religion, my deen. Allah. He said, so he believes, said, okay, believes, began to take revenge on Ayu's body and filled it with disease until it was reduced to mere skin and bone and he suffered severe pain but through all the suffering Ayu remained stern in his faith patiently bearing all the hardship without complaining this is what patient means brothers and sisters endure the hardship endure the suffering without complaining God is in control no matter what you're going through God is in control. Hold on to your faith. This is the lesson. Allah's righteous servant did not despair or turn to others for help, but remained hopeful of Allah's mercy. Even close relatives and friends deserted him. Only his kind, loving wife stayed with him in his hour of need. She showered her kindness on him 
and cared for him. She remained his sole companion and comforter through many years of suffering. Ayu was a man having much wealth of all kinds, brothers and sisters. Beasts, slaves, sheep, vast land, and many children. All those favors were taken from him, and he was physically afflicted as well. Never a single organ was sound except his heart and tongue, with both of which he glorified a lot. He still glorified a lot. The Almighty, all the time, all, day and night, he glorified a lot. His disease lasted for a long time until his visitors felt disgusted with him. His friends kept away from him. And people abstained from visiting him. Brothers, y'all can move up some, please. No one felt sympathy for him except his wife. She took good care of him, knowing his former charity and piety for her. Therefore, Ibelis became desperate. Satan became desperate. He consulted his helper, but they could not advise him. Look at this now. He went to his helper, consulted with them, had consultation with them. And they asked him, they asked Satan, the big devil. They said, how is it that your cleverness, your scheme, cannot work against IU, yet you succeeded in misleading Adam. You deceive Adam, the father of man, out of his paradise. Huh? He deceived Adam out of his paradise. Adam was deceived, man. Adam didn't intentionally disobey God. Satan tempted him and caused him to slip, right? We don't believe man is born out of sin that because we all sin because of Adam? God said that do not let, this is the Quran now, Allah said do not let Satan, the devil, Iblis, trick you like he tricked your forefather. Like he tricked Adam. We can't let him deceive us. We can't let him trick us. You want to be a Muslim? Then be right. Be righteous. Like I you was. Keep up your prayer. Stay devoted to God. Put your trust in God. Put your faith in God. This is a Muslim. This is a believer. A Muslim not a game. It's not a show. It's a real thing. What is religion? You want religion? This is religion. What God said. What our prophet say religion is. He said religion. They asked the prophet. They went to the prophet, the, 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 the believers there. They said, oh, prophet, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is religion? And the prophet gave them a simple answer. Religion is sincerity. Religion is sincerity. You can't be this now unless you're sincere. You got to be sincere. You can't be a Muslim today and be something else tomorrow. You can't be a Muslim when you come to Juma and then, excuse my language, a nigga when you leave out in the streets, a gangster, a thug, a robber, a cheater, a liar. This is real. This is the real life. You want it? Then you got to do about it. <clears throat> so, let me turn on the book. Let's go back up. Okay. We ain't got that one too long. I think we're too long. One third. We're going back to it. All right, we're going to go on then. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue, brothers and sisters. Thank you. I appreciate your patience with me. So, Ibelis 
So they said, yet you, you succeeded in misleading Adam, the father of man, out of paradise. So this is what the devil did. Satan. We call him Shaitan in Arabic. He's Shaitan. Huh? Shaitan. Shaitan went to a wife. He went to the man's wife in the form in the form of a man. Where's your husband? He asked. <laughs> he asked her. She pointed to an almost lifeless crumble. crumble I mean, a lifeless form crumbled on the bed and said, there he is, suspended between life and death. So the devil, listen now, listen to this devil, Shaitan. Shaitan is real. He ain't no ground nowhere, somewhere else, somewhere, you know. You want to see the devil? Look at yourself or look at someone outside you who doing devilish things, who deceiving people, who lying to people, or who living a life, of a false life. That is the devil. And if you live in that kind of life, then you are the devil. So you have to seek refuge in God from that devil that's in you. He's, a, he's among men and among men. So we have to seek refuge in God. From who? Shaitan. Right? So, he reminded her of the days when Ayu had good health. When Ayu was doing good. He had everything going for him. He had money. He had children. He had all these things. He reminded the devil started talking to him and reminded him of all these things, my brothers and sisters. So what happened to her? She, in pain, started remembering the years of the hardship that overcame her. And she burst into tears. She started to cry. Because he reminded her of all the good things. So she started remembering all the, the things that started happening to them. So she broke down. And she went to IU. She went to her husband. She went to IU. And she said, how long are you going to bear this fortune, this torture from our Lord? How long are you going to bear this? Are we to remain without wealth? Remain without children and friends forever? Why don't you call upon Allah to remove the suffering? Are you said in a low voice? He said to her, in a soft voice, he replied to her. He said, Iblis must have whispered to you. He must have made you dissatisfied. Tell me, how long did I enjoy good health and riches? She replied, for 80 years. <laughs> and you asked her, he said, how long am I suffering like this? How long have I been suffering like this? And she said, for seven years that I you told her. He said, in that case, I'm ashamed to call on my Lord to remove this hardship. For I have not suffered longer than the years of good health and plenty. It seems your faith has weakened and you are dissatisfied with the faith of Allah. If I ever again gain my health, I swear I will punish you with a hundred strokes. From this day on, I forbid myself to eat or drink anything from your hand. 
Leave me alone and let my Lord do with me as he pleases. Who? Oh, tell me there ain't a man of faith in God who put his trust in God, who loved God above anything and everything, above his children, his wealth, his wife. Everything he had, he put God first. And God let Satan test him and try him. But look, let's go on. But we're gonna get it's gonna get better as we go on. I hope you're seeing this. I hope you're able to see what I'm seeing. Because that's my purpose here. To give you what Allah has blessed me to see. And I want to share it with you. And I hope you can see it. Because this is this is this is what we need. This is this is what Job is all about. <clears throat> to, so that we can get instructions on how to instruct our life. How to live our life in a world like this. Man, I'm telling you, without the help of God, you would die. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. We would die, brothers and sisters. There's no life for us. The life is in this way of life, in Islam. This is the life. We have to come back to our laws. We, we've been away. Our soul has been lost. Let us stop here. Ask God to forgive us. Oh, Lord, please accept our prayer. Forgive us our sins. Have mercy on our soul. Bless us with the good of the Christ that dwells in you. Amen. Again, all the praise is due to Allah. We thank Allah again for his messenger, Muhammad, our prophet. He's God's messenger, our prophet. Right? We didn't give him a message. God gave him a message. So he's God's messenger. So again, let's look at this. And we say, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessing of God be upon him. We always say that. Even if we don't say it verbally, we say it in our heart. Yes. So let's look at this. And we're going to move a little faster because time is coming upon us. <clears throat> so, crying bitterly and with a heavy heart, she had no choice but to leave him and seek shelter elsewhere. <clears throat> In his helpless state, I you turn to God, not complaining, but to seek his mercy. And God saying the Quran, Verily, distress has seized me. This is Quran now. Verily, I use said, Verily, distress has seized me, and you and the most, you and the most merciful of all those who show mercy. So we answer his call, <clears throat> and we remove the distress that was on him. And we restore his family to him that he had lost, and the light thereof alone with them as a mercy from ourselves, and a reminder for all who worship us. You see? That, God saying, is a reminder for all of us who worship God. We must remember this, brother. We must read, we must study the life of Ayub. Then Almighty Allah also instructed. He said, Karim, Commemorate our servant Ayu, who, who, I mean, Ayu. Behold, he cried to his Lord. The evil ones had afflicted me with distress and suffering. The command was given, strike with that foot. Here is water wherein to wash cool and refreshing water to drink. And we gave him back his people. And we doubled it. We doubled their numbers as a grace from ourselves and a thing for commemoration for all who have understanding. Ayub obeyed, and almost immediately his good health was restored. Meanwhile, his faithful wife could no longer bear to be parted from her husband and returned to beg his forgiveness. Designed to serve him on entering the, on entering the house, she was amazed at the sudden change. Ayub was again healthy. She embraced him and thanked Allah for his mercy. Ayub was now worried. 
for he had taken an oath to punish her with a hundred stones if he regained his health. But he had no desire to hurt her. He knew if he did not fulfill the oath, he would be guilty of breaking a promise to Allah. Therefore, in his wisdom and mercy, Allah came to assist of his faithful servant and advise him. And take your hand, a bundle of thin grass, and strike therewith your wife. And break not your oath. Truly we found him patient. How excellent a slave. Verily he was ever off returning and repenting to us. That's Quran. Now, in wrapping it up, <coughs> the Bible has a picture of Ayu, and Ayu means job. Job. It means job. It is not spelled J O B as they say. Jo they pronounce it Job. J O B E. It is spelled J-O-B, job. The Quran say job. That is pronounced job, not job. And it says job, not, yeah, it said job, not job. But that is the way they designed the language to open our eyes if we are thinking and making connections. Right? We have to think. When we study Quran, when we study the life of Muhammad the prophet, but when we study these prophets, and study these things, the ayat, the ayat's a sign. But we have to make connections. So if they say job, and the Bible say Job, say the language. So actually, there is no person, listen there, no person, no one being tried and tested. That is an activity that earns income. That is an activity that earns income. Benefits and comfort. And no matter who the people, who the people are or the person, they have to understand that Understand that won't come to you on your time. Or when you think it should come. The God or the Lord who created the whole material world, he is the one who oversees it. Is it not for the creator to both create and command? That's come on. The Bible says that Job was a conscious man. So he could not accept to get money any kind of way. <laughs> he had to get it and feel morally comfortable with how he got it. So his friends were getting, getting it so obviously. So what is this saying? It's saying that this man suffered because he just won't do anything to get over. This is how we have to be. We can't do anything just to look for comfort. We have to sometimes suffer. Be patient. Deal with it. Don't stop praying to God. Don't curse God. You're only being tested. Even his own wife told him, why don't you curse that God? Go on and die. If he cared, you would be better off dead. Yeah. So, in closing, how you will succeed in this world is tied to how you will succeed with your own development. With your own development. 
because they both require faith in God. <clears throat> Commitment to truth and decency. You have to have patience. God knows best. I'm going to read something from the Quran and then inshallah we'll close. Wallace. By the token of time, through the age, verily man is in loss. Listen, brothers and sisters. By the token of time, through the age, verily man is in loss, except such as have faith and do righteous deeds and join together and the mutual teachings of truth and of patience and constancy. This is what we saw in that story of Ayu. If you don't have patience, you're not working together for the mutual teachings of truth and righteousness, joining together. See that that is talking about a person, it's talking about uh 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 um uh, uh, individual, but at the same time in this in, in, in this in this ayat, it's talk about a group. So you in your individual life has to remain patient, has to uh, uh, work to establish righteousness and truth, but at the same time, God is calling the group to do this. Joining together in the mutual teachings of truth and of patience and constancy. Patient means to endure the suffering, whatever you're going through. Hang in there, brother. Hang in there, sister. And you will see that God will never let you down. God is your only friend, and he will remain your friend. God said that you will have to leave him before he leaves you. So remember this, as you leave here today, and you go out through the week in your everyday life, remember that God is with you. <coughs> if you say you believe in God and you make your salat and you pray and you ask God to help you and guide you, then you obligate God. I don't care what you're going through in your life, you obligate God, but you have to remain patient so that you can be able to see the outcome of it. But if you fail, if you lose faith, if you lose patience, then you become lost. It will be no one fault but your own. God said he only wants good for you. He said bad happens from yourself or from the hands of someone else. So with that, we ask God to forgive us, have mercy on us, <clears throat> forgive us our past sins, present sins, and future sins. Amen. Amen. Allah
Jest mi na stałą tą szczeki. Stała to ladina en amsa aleikum. Rajwa mabdubi aleikum. Wola do. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you. 
in, in the not so distant future. <laughs> Don't forget you as a cat, which you can use when we have some, we have some bills to pay. Come back and see us again. We'll get fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller.